Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours. I'm your host, Jinx, and as always, joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, we're going to shift format around just a little bit today, uh, mostly to account for the fact that uh, we have Shane acting as our, uh, our current technical representative uh, on the foundation and, and protocol side, so uh, we're going to include uh, protocol updates at the beginning as well. So, Shane, uh, anything of interest uh, to announce this week? Uh, yeah, so uh, really it's just a, more of a basic update. Uh, the migration to Cosmos SDK uh, 0 0.50 is still underway. Uh, it's important to understand that with uh, with the upgrade from point four five or, or four uh, to point four to point five is uh, a significant uh, step in terms of how their dependency works and how their modules work, and so how the uh, Cosmos SDK works is you know all the function that really is Shannon is in modules, uh, and then. With this new upgrade to Cosmos, the the way that the dependencies and the kind of the module the module structuring works is is different. And so, what was working before doesn't work with this new structure in kind of the same way. So that's why they're having to basically swarm, uh, focusing on just this primarily um, to enable us to get the testnet ASAP. So. Uh, the team is, you know, most all focus right now is on this migration. And then uh, we do have a initial testnet uh, kind of going. It's, it's, it's more of a closed testnet right now, but uh, just, this, just on Monday, uh, they got it going. Um, there's still some issues with Rollkit where uh, it's not necessarily... Uh, sending all the data to the uh, Celestia, the data availability layer. So uh, there's still some some challenges there, uh, but things are moving forward, which is cool. Some blocks have been progressing, uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of the where development currently is at. Um, on the uh, on kind of my side, what I'm doing right now is focusing heavily on uh, figuring out a tokenomics. Uh, migration strategy so trying to come up with uh you know how we can enable trustless validators or, or sorry trustless uh um gateways and trustless applications uh kind of right off the bat uh because we're we're going from morse which is one specific tokenomics uh you know system to then shannon and you know we want to try to keep parity as much as possible while enabling brand new capabilities with trustless uh, gateways and applications. So that's where most of my time right now is kind of focused in in figuring out exactly, you know, how we can do that within uh, within Morse to Shannon and, uh, you know, allow Shannon to have the, the killer features that we want to be able to have it from kickoff. So that's kind of an update on what the protocol team's working on and then what I'm working on. Um, but yeah, happy to you know answer any questions uh, uh, at any point during this call to the best of my ability good any uh, questions about that doesn't seem like it so Zach any other uh, foundation Dow community updates yeah, I got a couple for you. Um, tomorrow in our community call, we'll be discussing creds in depth. There's a forum post with basically like the TLDR of creds uh, in there, and there's been some great conversation. So please give that a read. Uh, so that way when you come to the meeting tomorrow, we can actually have discussions about some of the mechanisms and how we got there. Um, this is the opportunity based on, you know, I think it was two weeks ago when Arthur brought up some some concerns. So this is our opportunity to like really hash this out as a community to make sure that it serves everybody. Um, so please join. Uh, what else is there? Uh, bounties have just opened, and I'll put them in put them in the side chat after this. But bounties have just opened. They're, we're trying to pr stay pretty lightweight with them, but would appreciate any feedback here. Um, they're just in the Discord. Uh, I'm paid in Wrap Pocket. 
And I know that the protocol team has some bounties as well. So, well, Shansky, I'm going to reach out to you or someone on your team to, to get those going as well. But here is the link. Um, other than that, uh, you know, ETH Denver's about a week away. So if anybody's going to be there, make sure you sign up for our event that is currently at, um, at capacity. Um, so if you're not on the list, but you're going to be there, DM me or ads, and we'll make sure you can get a, get a ticket to come in. I think that's it for me. Beautiful. And uh, Fred, uh, I see that you dropped the link in there. You want to talk about that and any other updates on uh, the Grove side? Yeah, uh, in preparation for um, the coming protocol upgrade, both to O11 and uh, Shannon, um, we're looking to ensure that we have a backup network, uh, disaster recovery network available and ready. Um, I will note this is different than the Altruist network of old. This will never, ever be used in a case where the chain is not halted. Yes. Um, and sorry, is there a question? Oh, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, this will, um, there there will be payment involved. So we will keep track of how many relays we processed against those nodes and make sure that everybody gets uh, remitted payment. Um, that payment rate is now listed in the form. It is the same rate that we would pay the foundation for burn on tokens or, or on processing relays. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, just feel free to reach out. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing some signups. We have pretty good coverage, but uh, excited to just fill this out and have this in our back pocket. No pun intended. <laughs> and I see that the uh, the bounties link has been dropped in uh, to the chat by Zach. So anybody who wants to follow that, go check that out there. Okay, and Zach is still typing here. Keep going, Jinx. All right, fair enough. <laughs> so uh, we don't have much in the way of uh, planned uh, topics today, so I'm going to open up the floor now for anybody who has a, uh, a topic of conversation, a question, or anything else that we want to chew on. Don't be shy. Come off mute and just say your piece. Was it uh, uh was it mentioned that um that uh we're doing the upgrade on Monday? Uh, to uh RCA zero point eleven point one. Um, that's happening on Monday. The uh, protocol team, including Oshansky, is going to be uh, kind of devoting the whole day to, to make sure that that's a, a, a smooth upgrade. So, um, yeah, uh, folks that are running validators, uh, definitely stay stay on comms um, on Monday, just so if there's any need to communicate, um, you know, we can uh, potentially avoid any, uh, uh, you know, any issues uh, quickly and make sure it's uh, ideally the, the most seamless upgrade we've had. So uh, anywho, just a little blurb there. I'm not sure if that was uh, officially mentioned earlier, but uh, yeah, Monday's our day and the team will be on, uh, on call monitoring and uh, helping folks uh, make that upgrade. So validators be on your toes. I saw the uh, the comment in uh, Discord that this was going to be the uh, very last upgrade of uh, Morse. Are we 100% confident on that? Because I've heard it before. I mean, I'm just parroting what, uh, what is the, the current consensus on it. 
um, I don't I don't know of any other parties that are wanting to do more with Morse uh, at the expense of, you know, pushing Shannon farther down the road. Um, it seems like pretty much everyone in the ecosystem is fully dedicated to getting to Shannon uh, once we uh, with this final upgrade. Um, so that's at least where I'm coming from. OK. And yeah. can you. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let me, I want to shed some more light on kind of to add to what Shane said. Uh, firstly, regarding the upgrade, I am in a more detailed announcement uh, so that everyone's on the same page in terms of what's happening on Monday, where the war room is going to be, um, who should slash shouldn't be on call and how everyone can follow along. Uh, I tried sending it out last night, but I uh, had some technical issues. Uh, regarding the... the whether or not this is the last upgrade. Uh, the reason kind of the previous was meant to be the last one, but another consensus breaking change is again, uh, is because, uh, you know, the coders, some other community members, we found a great opportunity to leverage what Pocket Network, what Pocket Network offers, given the evolution of AI, which I think was unforeseen. So, even if this was the last upgrade, I don't think anybody could predict how big AI inference was going to be. And while we are continuing to develop scan and uh, the opportunity of enabling LLMs and other services on Morse before the upgrade is just too big to let up. Uh, and that's what we're kind of doing both in parallel. Noted, okay. And y'all talked about the uh, um, alpha testing for uh, testnet uh, recently, uh, Shane or Olshansky, anyone, uh, any further updates on that? Yeah, uh, it's right. Yeah, we, we just kind of deployed a, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I would call it just a alpha testnet. Um, on Monday. Um, so there's there's a few issues, uh, GitHub issues open uh, with Rollkit on uh, uh, on basically Rollkit kind of stalling out. Uh, so yeah, there's there's definitely still some some things that need to be addressed before we can have like what we would consider a public testnet, um, you know, a true public testnet. So uh, to keep things kind of quick and to keep things able to be iterated on quickly. Um, yeah, we're not considering this like an open test net, but uh, yeah, we can announce that we have a test net, uh, a very, very alpha test net that is starting to be used to uh, get visibility into, um, uh, yeah, into the workings, which is what's pointing out these issues uh, that we identified with Rollkit and that are currently being worked out. Beautiful. Can you, uh, do you have someone who is uh, in a dedicated role creating documentation for this as it goes live? That's one of the things that has been uh, a complaint in the past is a lack of good technical documentation. Actually, yes. Um, that was actually, uh, that was a surprise of mine when, uh, uh, kind of when I started working more closely with the protocol team, is that that's actually been a uh, huge focus of theirs, uh, is getting good documentation. Um, one of the reasons I was able to get onboarded so quickly in general uh, with everything that they're working on and uh, what they've done and what they're doing is because they actually have really great documentation uh, in terms of what they, uh, you know, it, a lot of it is internal right now and it's being worked on, but I'm very excited about uh, getting things to a point where we're going to start being able to release that and included in that is going to be uh, very solid documentation to help folks be able to deploy and join the, the public test net uh, once we're able to open it up. Awesome, that's good. That's really great to hear. I know that uh, we've been looking at a variety of options on how to use the, the new main net in some new creative ways. And, and the better the documentation is, the better off we're gonna be uh, out of the gate in being able to use test net effectively. And I think that that's, that's probably something, I mean, we had before the first main net, we had an incentivized test net, right? Which was a, a pretty significant community uh, process. But 
I think that there's less incentive right now um, for this test net versus just, you know, sort of waiting for other folks to figure it out and, and to uh, run through whatever errors or difficulties there might be given the lack of incentive. So the better the documentation is, the, the more effective and more efficient it's going to be for us who are dabbling in testnet to see what's possible. Yeah. Yeah, there isn't uh, there isn't a direct plan right now to have uh, you know like an incentivized testnet. Um, I think Pocket is mature enough of the, as of an ecosystem that uh, there's enough players that are invested in the ecosystem that uh, you know they're already incentivized to start playing with testnet and start uh, yeah uh, playing on the deployment side, playing on the uh, uh, app side. Uh, which is what sounds like you're uh, partially interested in Jinx and, and, you know, creating applications that can, uh, you know, utilize Pocket, uh, the the Shannon version. So, anywho, yep. yeah, there's a uh, yeah that there, there's enough incentive, I think, in the ecosystem that a you know incentivized testnet isn't necessarily needed uh, in terms of incentivized through tokens, but because we're heavily invested in the ecosystem as as a whole, uh, there's already an incentive there. Um, and like I said, you know, credit to the protocol team for actually having, you know, documentation, a high priority of theirs, um, already, uh, before I even came into the mix. And once we get to the point that we can release it all and folks can start playing with the, the network, either on an application side or on the node side. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be an exciting time. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, Zach, I hate to put you on the spot, but I think you're the only person here from Foundation, so you're the only person here who potentially has a chance to, or has, might have a chance to, to answer this question, but uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, WPocket on Arbitrum, uh, and there's two different approaches that we've seen to that. When we originally started looking at WPocket bridging, uh, we were looking at uh, you know, having a multi-chain bridge that would allow WPocket to be able to go to different chains. Um, most of the recent conversation I've seen around Arbitrum has been outlining a two-step process of bridging to ETH on WPocket and then bridging to Arbitrum from there. Uh, given that ETH to Arbitrum bridges already exist, I don't see this as being a useful route for the, the foundation to go. Um, whereas, you know, a direct bridge from Pocket to Arbitrum would, uh, would be much more useful and also really, at the end of the day, more efficient uh, because it would skip the whole high gas process of, of bridging from uh, Pocket's L1 to uh, the, the ETH network to begin with. Any updates or insights around the, the thought processes uh, involved on getting into other chains? No. <laughs> um, actually, so me and Ben had a call yesterday about it. I would actually say, I don't want to put any words in his mouth, but he's going to be leading the conversation tomorrow on cred. So I think that's a great open floor question for tomorrow. We didn't really get to chat through all the details, but he had brought it up in our call. So um, yeah, I would rather he spoke on it than I gave you incorrect information. Okay, fair enough. I have that in my calendar for uh, tomorrow at 11, I believe. Uh, it changed because Ben is in Australia. So I, the, let me see, the actual event is correct for tomorrow, which is at 1 PM my time. So oh, noon Pacific. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. and it'll be recorded and we'll get that online if, if not. And if you aren't there to answer, ask the question, I'll make sure that we do. Perfect. And if we could get those guys to turn their clocks right way up, uh, it would help a lot. So. The Australians? Yeah. 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 I'll put in a note with the embassy. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, those are the open questions that I had. Who else has a question or a comment or a complaint or some general observation about the weather? Well, I will I will say this, uh, with talking about uh bridging, there is gonna be a lot of interesting options uh that will be that could be potentially available with uh, Shannon. So, uh, like right now, the Rat Pocket Bridge uh, had to be manually built uh, mm -hmm. by PNF, and they did a phenomenal job building it out and getting it launched. Uh, but 
you know, they had to manually build that bridge. And so if they were then to go to something like uh, Arbitrum, uh, they then have to manually build that bridge as well because Morse has, uh, you know, it's its own beast, right? And only their bridge is the, the bridge that's compatible with Morse. Um, so depending on when we're, you know, going to uh, Arbitrum and when Shannon is releasing and stuff, uh, you know, the I would suspect that the friction to getting bridges to other networks is going to be uh, relatively, could, could be relatively straightforward because we will be able to integrate with a lot more products because we're built off the Cosmos SDK. Um, so there's a lot of potential for bridges that aren't, uh, that don't have to be necessarily run by PNF um, or, you know, designed and developed literally by PNF. Uh, we could potentially work with existing, because uh, there's, there's a lot of existing um, uh, services out there that are bridging between uh, things like, you know, Cosmos SDK and EVM chains, right? So, yeah, there, there's really a, a kind of a whole world that can be open to us by uh, the Cosmos SDK um, with Shannon. So, yeah, even if there might be a clunky version to start with, um, if, 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 they des if PNF decides to go the route of uh, wrap pocket on Ethereum to Arbitrum, and you can't go directly from Arbitrum back to, you know, native pocket token. Um, down down the road, once we have Shannon on mainnet, uh, there could be solutions that could be potentially either built or just integrated into existing ecosystems uh, that would allow us to bridge more directly. Um, because, yeah, with the Cosmos SDK, we're able to work with inside most of the Cosmos world. So there's a lot of possibilities there. Does that mean we could expect uh, IBC support out of the gate? Uh, IBC support, not, not so I, I, I can't speak emphatically on this, uh, but uh, there are solutions to get IBC support through uh, without it necessarily being directly uh, something that we have to like hard code into it. So yes, IBC support is very possible. Uh, Zatar asks, can the bridge with Arbitrum be developed during a Shannon testnet? I mean, yeah. go for it, Daniel. Yeah, so on the topic of IBC support and other bridges, uh, by leveraging directly and staying up to date with uh, the Cosmos SDK main, <clears throat> mainline, what that's going to give us is native IBC support. And by, by having native IBC support, there's a lot of other projects and solutions that basically enable bridges from IBC to whatever you want, for lack of a better word. So whether it's Arbitrum or uh, EVM chains or something else, we will have native IBC support through the Cosmos SDK, and that opens up a lot of doors almost for free. Uh, I don't want to say for free, but by collaborating with other projects, uh, you might not have to do a lot of uh, development on our side at all. Beautiful. Exactly what I like to hear. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Native IBC uh, support. Yeah, Shannon, that's awesome. Heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We're here to please the people. Other questions?
I mean, this is y'all's hour, so if uh, everybody is all hunky dory, happy to end it early. But you know, if you have a question, thought, observation, feel free to come off mute and jump in. Yeah, the one other thing I'll just uh, take this as an opportunity to add uh, is that I will send out an announcement. We will have a war room uh, on the day of the release scheduled for next Monday. I'll kind of be sharing my screen, a few other core developers sharing their screen, uh, as many validators as can join us that day uh, as we are deploying would appreciate it. Uh, but if you can't be there synchronously, just being on standby uh, would be very appreciated. Excellent. What time on Monday, as Tara says? Uh, probably around 9 or 10 a.m. Uh, primarily just because myself and the coder team are on the West Coast. Uh, but any announcement, I'll reach out to a few other people, see when they're available, uh, and I'll share the exact time then. Beautiful. OK, we'll keep an eye out for it there, Zatar, so keep an eye on the Discord. Other thoughts, questions, compliments, complaints, declarations of heresy? All right, well, some weeks it's short, some weeks it's long. Looks like this week it's short. Hang tough. Uh, make sure that we see the, uh, or make sure that you're at our community call tomorrow uh, morning. Uh, check the schedule for that for your local time. And uh, we'll see y'all again for this call next week. Same time, same channel.